So five months ago, Matt from P1 with Matt and Tommy paired up with Oscar Piastri to draw the outlines of their dream made up tracks. Piastri just drew Suzuka and connected it to Silverstone. Boring. Can you not think of something original? God. But Matt comes to save the day and this beautiful, beautiful boy, this graceful, glorious gargantuan gladiator Gallagher gave us his girth. He blessed us with this, the Gallagher drone. Let's make it happen in Assetto Corsa. Since they didn't actually show the drawing on the screen properly, I have to outline it myself and here I'm facing a dilemma. Just look at this long ass straight here and compare it to these high speed corners here. I don't think this will be a good idea for a racetrack, so I took the liberty of slightly redesigning this section of the track. There are some other issues, but I want to keep it somewhat true to the original, so let's just dive straight into Blender. I do the classic beginning tracing the image using a plane with a road texture. When you do this, you have to test the track immediately to see if there are any bumps that are impossible to drive over or ones that can launch your car straight into oblivion. However, as I test it for the first time, I kinda put the start arrow the other way around and I have to do a 7 million point turn in a Formula 3 car to actually get me going in the correct direction. And as years pass and I finally turned around, I break too late for the very first corner and fall off the map. Yes, this is just the first of many self-inflicted moments of pain that my intelligence depraved brain made me do. I uh, had no idea this was possible honestly. Moving on, next up I add a grass buffer to the side of the road. I always do this in case I mess up something with the surrounding landscape, which inevitably happens every single time. Beautiful! Looking like a real track already. Of course, a major factor of how real a racetrack feels is elevation, which I add but very, very carefully after my last attempt went... Interestingly. Next up, curbs. And just like previously, I take the core colors of the P1 YouTube channel and make a curb using their purple and white. This way it'll look at least somewhat realistic while staying true to the creator's branding. What's the number one rule when it comes to curbs? You test them immediately after placing the first one. I also make the track limit lines, by the way I did try again and tested it properly, don't worry. I also make the track limit lines and for anyone creating race tracks, do not forget these as they add so much realism to the way the track feels. Just compare this to this. Very different. The second one looks so much more realistic and believable with so little effort. Anyway, baby. I test out the curb again and it's kinda harsh but it's the good kinda harsh. And I can move on to the very first boring repetitive tasks placing the curbs all around the track. So here's a little time lapse of me doing just that while I provide another killer no copyright Eurobeat in the background. I test drive the track again, this time settling on an actual F1 car with traction control enabled and y'all just- Alright, alright, listen up, listen up everyone. Don't you dare give me shit for my driving in the comments this time. I'm testing these on a keyboard with automatic shifting, which for some reason drives in economy mode. Don't you dare push me, don't you fucking push me, don't you fucking dare, don't you fucking Now that the curbs are done, the time has come for me to show off my worst skill in a set of course at track creation. Landscaping. I still haven't figured out how to do this. In the last video, I mentioned that I watched a lot of Dime's videos, but didn't learn much, and Dime himself even saw the video and commented on it, but didn't respond to my life or death inquiry, so um, fuck this, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna ballpark it like last time. Ah, oh, that is properly disgusting. disgusting. Welp can be too good with a shovel when I'm too busy shoveling your mom. Another thing I want for this track is to give it a tunnel. I don't really know why, but I just have this strong urge to put a tunnel and while I'm at it, I might as well make it artistic. artistic. And I just kind of experiment and eventually arrive at this magnificent structure that just looks like a communist mega project for some reason. Well, technically I am from a post-communist country, so we're just gonna label it as cultural appreciation so Twitter can rest. Oh, look at that. Tunnel. 
The next thing I want to try is to add some background landscapes, some hills, mountains, though we have to keep in mind that this is England, so let's just stick to the hills. And honestly, after adding the landscape backdrop, it just seems like a lot happened without me needing to do much. It's just so much easier on the eyes. Um, let me fix that. Pits. We all love them, so I shall deliver. I make a huge pit lane, not realizing it's huge yet. Make some pit lines, and to add some spice, some, some tasty, tasty flavor, I make this little fancy offset here and color it purple. Just before realizing how insanely long my pit lane is, I make some custom banners. I make a new one for myself, one for Matt and Tommy, and one to advertise the track itself a bit more. The name itself is just so good. The Gallagher Drone. Sounds almost Viking-y. I put the advertising on the pit building and even without me unzooming, you can see that the building takes about 25% of the pit lane. For comparison, at Spa, it's about 80 to 90%. <sighs> yeah, whatever. You know what, whatever. Small errors like that just give my track character. Not wanting to think about that just yet, I moved to decorating the main street with some barriers, some fences, some tire walls for the ones with skill issues. Now, my turn one has this big area where people can just cut the track to get the advantage, and I thought, why not just put some advertising on it? It looks kind of lame all purple like that, so I just make this at Matt P1 Tommy X zooming past ground banner, and honestly, that looks a lot better than I expected, so let's high five and move on. The number one thing you have to do to make something look good is honestly just add as much detail as you can. Since I want to elevate my track making game, I dive straight into making little details such as lines on the outside of the curbs, proper advertising starting banner, grandstands, all the optional stuff. Just to make turn one look super nice and all professional and shit. And this time my ADHD is getting the better of me. You see, I can't just focus on just doing one thing. I start skipping from doing the barriers to making more lines, coloring some concrete barriers for some reason, and just, it has no structure, it's frustrating me. So, let me just take a deep breath and assess what's best. Yes, I have reached enlightenment. I have the asphalt down, I have the grass down, let's do the sand along with the barriers because they belong together. <sighs> Inner peace. And after reaching the astral plane and ascending to a higher being, I can use this focus to avoid distractions. Barriers. Barriers. Sand, sand, barriers, Patreon banner, procrastination. Oh come on! After abandoning my career as a Buddhist monk, I went out for another test drive. You need to do this quite often with barriers to see what the track feels like, if the barriers are scary or not. And since I put the barriers super close, I really need to test it out. And believe me, my skill issues made sure that I tested every single one of them. Do you know what part of modern life is making it boring? Safety regulations. I hate them, you hate them, we all hate them. We all hate safety and we want group B back. That being said, I will not comply with the safety regulations and only put like one line of tires as the tire barrier all around the track. Again, track making is a ridiculously repetitive thing and making an entertaining video about it, well, <laughs> I'm going feral. Yeah, once that's done, what's next? Oh, you thought you could escape the tire barriers? Fuck no. Fuck no. More and more and more and more tires, more tires, more tires, more tires. I want to start filling the empty space on the track, so I add some truck stops and actually use the colored concrete barriers that I made to block them from the track, and it actually looks kind of neat. I wasn't expecting that. Then I place some more tents, some more trees, and it's all nice and all fancy. So fancy, in fact, that I get all blushy and have to hide in a garage. Parking. What the hell am I doing with my life? Though there's quite a big problem with the track as is, the eagle eyes amongst you will spot that even though the track is empty and there's literally nothing but the barriers, my FPS is already dropping quite badly. It's hard to spot if you're just watching, but when you play, you can definitely feel it. 
which is a bad thing considering there is a heap of shit that I haven't even added yet. So I have to go back and manually decimate every single barrier. And I didn't film it because I was embarrassed. Yet still, there was too much geometry for a set of courses liking. So to replace some sections, I take this concrete barrier and apply all the sponsor stickers I'd made in Photoshop. Zooming past, P1 with Matt and Tommy, and my Patreon, where you'll be able to get this track for the lowest price possible according to Patreon rules. Apart from these barriers, I also get these side overhead structures and put my sponsors on it and just kind of scatter them all around the track without thinking really. Lights. Every good straight needs some lights. Will they work? Hell no. But I think it's just kinda neat to have them, so... Ta-da! Let's go A-team mode. More lights, grandstands, replacing barriers, side banners, flaggers, replacing barriers, curb decorating, buildings, more buildings, trees, replacing barriers, more trees, more trees, even more trees. Oh yeah, this is gonna take a while. So instead of facing my problems, I make some meter boards. I decided to go for 200, 150, 150. Just the day prior, I learned how to sync distance in Blender with distance in Acero Corsa, so I can just space them 50 meters apart from each other and boom! Honestly, that looks really good. I did not expect something I make to look really good. Now just to put them everywhere they need to be, like here, 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 and here. That's it. To break the boring pattern, I prepare some car models and make a big patch of asphalt for something very exciting. See, I'm not afraid to experiment. That's why they call me Papa the Scientist. And this ballsiness gives me the audacity to add a parking lot. I don't know, I just kinda thought the track needs more recognizable terrain, so I just add some lines on the ground, scatter cars around the lot, and also add some trucks on the side to make it look busier, slap some buildings in the background, and boom, a nice parking lot. That definitely doesn't follow safety protocols, just the way we like it. But eventually I have to face planting thousands of trees again. So let's just get it over with. This is always the most annoying part of the video. It just kinda tree 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 tree. Oh, it's done. Nice. Test drive time. I must admit, it doesn't look bad at all. It turned out much better than I thought. Still ways to go, but I'm honestly happy about this. Apart from the frame rate and the pit lane, apparently I still have some barrier replacing to do here. So I replace some, tweak some props so that the trucks don't look like they're tipping over, add some more trees in the gaps. I feel as though we're at the final stretch. I edit all the overhead banners to be more versatile rather than have all of them saying Gallagher Drome. And the most important part for me, I credit both of my patrons on Patreon, including Jaden Beavers, my first ever patron, and Adam's Apple, a Minecraft drifter who uses Google fucking maps to make Initial D toges and Formula One tracks and converts them into Minecraft worlds? Holy shit. Honestly, I watched his videos and this dude is insane with the amount of ghetto techniques he uses to make stuff for his Minecraft iceboat racing server. He is criminally underrated, so if you're interested in this stuff, please go and check out Adam's channel. Enough distractions, let's get back on the road. For a set of cores to work, you need to give it the locations of all the start positions and the pit positions. I also make the starting car lines. I wonder how, I wonder also, while making the track, I posted on YouTube, Twitter, the community tab, or whatever it is, asking for your contributions to the track. Two people responded. Nice. One of you wanted a tunnel, which f***ing granted, and the other wanted a Matt and Tommy cutout watching the race from the grandstands. Well, say no more, my friend. I cut out the backgrounds for my random image I found, slap it onto a plane, and boom. Done. May the lords be watching us always. Me and Acero Corsa AI always beef. I can never set it up properly, but this time, I did. I recorded the AI lines on this unshaded version of the track and, well, look! Nothing out of the ordinary happened. Okay, they might be slightly aggressive, but, but the racing works first try. Fuck yeah! Just to shade the track and it's ready to ship to the world! And then after I was done, someone in the community post just asked me to add an ice cream truck. <sighs> okay, I'll add the fucking ice cream truck. It isn't a problem at all. Nah, but seriously, I forgot to shade Matt and Tommy in a set of course as internal editor, so I have to redo it anyway. Anyway, let's head to qualifying for the 2024 Gallagher Drone British Grand Prix. Let's see an onboard of our pole sitter today, number 16 in the Ferrari. Charles Leclerc.
And yes, much like last time, I'll be releasing the race highlights video next week. So make sure you're subscribed and you have the notifications on for that. With this, I leave you, my friends. Goodbye and see you next week, hopefully, until I whatever. Yeah, freaking bye.